Hey guys, so welcome to the second episode. I know I always complain about um, having videos and not creating enough and stuff like that, but that is sadly how it's going. But episode two, Unintended Targets, following the Watcher, this is a really interesting uh, bit of research that I did a couple of months ago. The reason why these are so delayed is because I want to give the victims enough time and the seriousness of the case is these people do get... Um, told about the situation that they're under um, so there there is that I don't just leave them and say nothing's going on but I don't I, I don't give too much information because obviously uh, I just want to reveal that they're a victim and help them but obviously I can't help them that much uh, because um, they may not want me to anyway so episode two unintended targets this one was a really interesting one because basically I'm not fully sure this this was the intended target. I think they accidentally became a target, which the malware developer or malware operator, should I say, um, got a lot of luck, but a, a lot of worrying luck. Um, so from episode one, we talked about large amounts of information being taken from um, a point of sale um, provider person that, that sets up the systems and how really a provider like that and a lot of different threat actors sometimes target people who are under these sort of positions where they're providing services that lead to large vectors of victims and a way to pivot across um, for example APT10 cloud hopper with managed service providers that was a really interesting case with APTs where you you could obviously see the reason why they would target such uh, a sector because it, it led them to be able to pivot across multiple sectors anyway so this is a complex job um, due to the nature of um, them configuring and engineering and it's the same thing in this case <clears throat> except from this is a different sector so the the victim in itself is an engineering sort of configuring IT person which leads to this problem so in this case um, the way I would describe the victim is public based. Um, I probably blur out the most information in this episode and have the least information about this in this episode for a victim simply because there is no reason for me to really reveal too much information information about this particular victim. It is clear from the software even though I've blurred what sort of victim this could be simply looking at this it was quite a bit worrying for me to see the amount of screenshots um, and I did attempt to notify the person they did not come back to me there was an attempt and it's simple as that for me I did attempt to notify there was no response this did I did check this was uh, a very long time ago now from the attack and I do believe either it was remedied or the AV cap caught it because it did have a cutoff point where it, it finally w wasn't getting the logs. The malware w operator wasn't receiving any more logs. But what he did, re or she received, what the malware operator received was quite worrying. As you can see on the screen, something to do with the jail, some sensitive op messages, um, public safety software, the ability to manage jail. So this is quite a worrying thing. You would expect APTs to be able to develop some sort of... Um, access to this sort of systems but to see what seemed to be primarily a crime based threat act to gain this sort of level of control is quite worrying for the amount of time that they got <clears throat> the, the second most worrying bit about this was this the passwords.xls a little bit worrying that this is a thing this was this year 2019 so many icons you could probably guess from the blurred out but not very well but this person was very important to a particular area of the world related to safety um, and if we go to the, the the third part I think this from the attackers point of view was the attack vector I think or ve infection vector what I say there and the reason why I say this is that every single screenshot that I was able to grab from the C2 to see victims I see this advanced IP scanner so obviously I don't have the assumption all of the logs that are you know there was a large amount of data that I talked about in episode one I haven't gone through every single thing because it is very very hard but looking at this what led me to believe that this was the infection vector was that every time 
I look at these victims, every single victim, they have used this software at, at one point. So I believe that either the, the attackers backdoored it in some way or there has been a mechanism to lead to infection. Um, so there, there was further bad things that I could see were maybe not good vibes that they, they, they were infected. This looked like a um, <clears throat> place where you would receive emergency phone calls. This could be problematic if an attacker could gain control of this. And so it was quite worrying to see such a thing like this. Um, there was, it, it led me to understand the, the, I, I'm not sh fully sure how well funded this, this, uh, victim was, but seeing this was, this appeared to be quite old school software, but seeing this, uh, and the, the, the potential of an issue, maybe, maybe the, the attacker could wipe this completely, you know, it, 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 this, this was a crime based threat actor, but for me, we talk a lot about the different motivations of attackers, definitely in my job, but also in all of cybersecurity, you know, you have pen testing, but you also have a load of other threat actors, hacktivism, espionage, sabotage, all of these motivations, and that's not all of them, by the way, lead to, to issue, when you think of this victim in this particular situation, you lead to a number of problems. Even in a crime-based situation, you could see the advantages that could be for an attacker. You could see the local advantages to a crime-based uh, individual. Crime-based doesn't make sense. Crime-motivated individual. Um, so it was quite worrying to see this. On your left, you're seeing Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. They are the logs of various calls. And you're seeing a log of different calls that happened, obviously, related to this. This also had sensitive operations related to um, the particular people that would go out to that call, as far as I could understand. I mean, I'm not an absolute expert in this particular area. As I say here, um, emergency caller system, obvious dangers. The next slide, I think this might be, yeah, the, the the penultimate slide for me, only because there's very few things, sadly, that I can show in this, but this was jail CCTV or some form of CCTV for a particular public entity, and it was quite worrying to see this the, the ability for this. Um, as we can see, this happened in January. This is now September. I've left this for quite a while for a reason. But it is quite worrying to see this. Um, there is obvious dangers here as well. Um, even more so compared to this, there could be problems related to um, access to CCTV. The the actual sophistication of the attacker meant that the obvious manipulation and um, <clears throat> changes to the system were very unlikely. But it was it was a, a worrying thing to see on the screenshots. You know, you see a load of stealers nowadays from people that are fairly unsophisticated, and the the reason they're unsophisticated is maybe they don't develop the malware, or maybe they don't fully understand the uh, ability to go around an, an infected system. But the power of the malware that the malware developer has created means that the access that these attackers have is far greater than maybe they actually know and so when they develop or con control and get a system and gather these screenshots it is quite a worry to see them in the logs and finally I'm going to talk about some of the things that I wouldn't show and couldn't show when I say wouldn't and couldn't I essentially mean I absolutely wouldn't some ID cards and inmate information when I mean ID cards I believe related to um, personal information, not ID cards related to security personal. So um, th there's a per there's there's quite a normal popular thing here with um, in relation to uh, this attacker where they seem to be able to gather personal details even though they're crime based and they're mostly looking for financial information. Obviously, ID cards are one of those pieces of information that can be of interest to a crime based threat actor. Um, there was documents related to cases from a very long time ago where people were opening documents. Obviously quite upsetting to see that. Um, and the same thing that I put here, complex job, due to the nature of, and I'm just going to read out the sentence, due to the nature of configuring and engineering in a victim's job, it reveals large amounts of infection vectors. And when I mean infection vectors, I mean these are multiple 
areas that they're logging into and going into. These are not just one area that the the the, the malware operator has just popped, um, and that has led to issues. That is all I've got for you this time. Hopefully, you've enjoyed a very quick overview of a very serious case that um, I gathered from a crime-based logs. I talked about it in episode one mostly. This was more about the second victim. The third episode is uh, a little, well, it's not, it's not more interesting. It's just a little bit more, it's not light, but it's a little bit less worrying than this. Anyway, I'll leave you with that, guys. Thank you for watching.